All right, guys, time for the GI drugs. So first we're gonna go over gastrointestinal drugs. My name is Nurse Nick. Uh, we're gonna do a pharmacology review. I'm an emergency department nurse. Uh, I'm a American Heart Association ACLS PALS instructor, and I'm also a pharmacology instructor at a college. So uh, we're gonna do GI medications today. Something to consider with all GI medications. This is gonna be uptake of nutrition. Uh, it's also going to have things with GERD, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux, um, is a really common problem that comes to the emergency department when it comes to the hospital in general. So medications that treat that. And then, of course, elimination issues, right? So whether it's constipation or diarrhea, we're going to be going over that. So that's kind of the extent of what the GI drugs, maybe a little bit of nausea, some peristalsis, or uh, GI motility movement. So the first medication we're going to go over is going to be Cytotec. This is misoprostol. You guys talked about Cytotec where? In OB, right? What did you give Cytotec for in OB? You want to think about that. A lot of drugs have multiple uses, so take that into consideration. So Cytotec or misoprostol is how you need to recognize that. This medication is used in GI to prevent ulcers for people that are taking excessive NSAIDs. Or what other drugs have we talked about that has high risk of ulcers? It's gonna be your steroids, right? Your loans, your prones. Prednisone, um, methylprednisolone, things like that. So misoprostol is given to prevent ulcers for people that are uh, excessively using NSAIDs or drugs that can cause ulcers. But this medication was used in OB to induce labor. Well, with that consideration, if you're gonna use it for a GI source, you wanna make sure you do not give it to pregnant women. It kind of makes sense now, right? So. If it's given to induce labor, if you give it to somebody that's three months pregnant, it's going to induce labor, maybe cause dysmenorrhea, have an adverse effect of miscarriage, but this medication does also cause GI upset, all right? So this does uh, decrease acid secretion and increase production of protective mucus and bicarb. So it, it makes the area a little less acidic and you might be at a higher risk for infection. The next medications uh, we're going to talk about four medications that treat GERD. All right, so GERD is that acid reflux, that gastroesophageal reflux disease. So the first medication is going to be the mucosal protectant. This is going to be sulcrophate or sulcrophate or caraphate. All right, so sulcrophate, the way that I actually like to recognize this medication, this one goes down into your stomach and creates a, a thick like paste to cover ulcers that you already have, right? So I think of uh, sulcrophate or caraphate. As you take it, it goes down into your stomach and pff, it creates an explosion to cover the inner lining of your GI tract or your stomach. So if you have an ulcer and then that acid comes back when you're eating or you get too full, the, prote the protective barrier is gonna keep that safe or decrease pain um, by the mucosal protectant. So this medication can cause constipation. So with anybody with constipation, what is the education that I keep telling you guys to remember? Fluid, fiber, and exercise. That's how we reduce the risk for constipation, right? Also, this medication needs to be taken one hour before meals, four times a day. Why only three times a day? So what's that? Okay, before you go to sleep. You need to take an hour before you go to sleep, why? Because education with gastroesophageal reflux disease also comes with physical position, right? After you eat, you don't want to have a lot of dependent position on your stomach because that acid can reflux up. But equally, before you go to bed, you are going to lay down. So that's more opportunity for acid to come back. So it's going to be taken an hour before bedtime as well. Increase your fluid fiber and uh, exercise. Decrease risk for constipation. Sulcrophate treats GERD by coating the lining of the stomach. Now the next GERD medication is an antacid, okay? There's multiple forms of antacid, and even when I'm in the hospital, when I go to grab the, the prescribed Tums, it literally says calcium on there, okay? So antacids, you can have a few types. You can have magnesium, mag hydroxide. You can have sodium bicarb, which everybody knows bicarb is a buffer for acidic situations. And then you can have uh, calcium and aluminum. Now what you need to know is calcium and aluminum may cause constipation. So what consideration with constipation? Teach everybody fluid, fiber, and exercise reduce the risk of constipation. 
Now additionally or adversely, magnesium may cause diarrhea. So watch out for that. So an antacid is where if you take that antacid and you drop into your acid bowl filled stomach, it neutralizes the acid. So we talked about sulcrophate coats the lining and acids neutralize acid to work and decrease uh, GERD symptoms. Also consider this medication, you wanna take it one hour and three hours after meals and bedtime, take one hour before or after other medications. Let's think about that for a second. So if antacids are gonna mess with absorption and secretion in your stomach, uh, let's say I gotta take a Tylenol, all right? If I decide I'm gonna take a Tylenol, I should wait an hour to go ahead and take that calcium antacid because it might mess with the absorption of the Tylenol. Or opposite, if I need to go ahead and take my, my calcium Tums as an antacid, I need to wait an hour before I take my Tylenol because otherwise it won't be absorbed well and you're not gonna get the full impact of the medication. That's why you need to wait an hour before or after to take other medications with the calcium or the antacids. Now the next medication is gonna be ranitidine or Zantac. You guys know this is Zantac. Now ranitidine or also famotidine, these are H2 receptor antagonists. So famotidine is pretty popular, a lot of people recognize that. Famotidine is also called Pepsid, right? Pepsid and Zantac. Now this one, they most, most of them end with ene, but this also treats gastric and duodenal ulcers, reduces gastric acids and secretions by blocking those H2 receptors. So we talked about sulcrophate one coats, right? Sulcrophate caraphate coats. Two is the antacids. They neutralize the acid when you put the take the medication down. Now the third way is ranitidine. This one decreases the acid, right? But with the decrease of acid, you're gonna change your pH levels and this one does increase the risk of bacterial colonization or stomach or respiratory tract infections because of the change in acid. You know that's a natural defense mechanism from, from infections. The last one I'm gonna go over in this small sequence of video is gonna be your proton pump inhibitors. These are your azoles. So omeprazole or pantoprazole, pantoprazole is protonics. Omeprazole is Prilosec that you can get, right? Everybody knows these medications. So pantoprazole, these medications with the suffix azole are proton pump inhibitors. So how do these help treat GERD? These decrease acid secretion in your stomach. So also used for ulcers, GERD, this inhibits the gastric and acid secretion enzyme. This medication may cause GI upset. It does cause increased risk for osteoporosis with long-term use, so you might wanna consider that. And anybody that has osteoporosis or bone disorders, what's that next piece of information we wanna encourage them to increase intake of? It's gonna be calcium and vitamin D with bone disorders, all right? So if you have any, just stick with me with the videos, like, keep following it. We got pre more, a lot more farm coming for you. Thank you guys.